Hello everyone, it's me Clayton. I just finished watching Blood of Zeus Season 2. Now, the original Blood of Zeus was one of the many shows that kept me entertained throughout the pandemic in 2020. So, I didn't expect to have to wait three and a half years to finally see another season of it. But I am glad that I decided to give the second season a try because while I enjoyed the first season, I felt that the main characters were pretty boring and that the pacing was a bit off, especially in comparison to the Castlevania series in Seis Manos, which Powerhouse Animation Studios also worked on. And while those issues aren't entirely resolved in Season 2, I do think that it's a slight improvement over the first season in many regards. But let's get to the story, shall we? After the events of the battle between the Giants and the Olympians, Olympic Gods in the first season, Heron has to find a way to honor his father Zeus, who sacrificed himself in the battle. While we, But the main storyline we follow revolves around Hades, played by Fred Tattashore. Hades has been trying to get a, a powerful stone that was on Mount Olympus, and he was unable to acquire it when Hestia had to deliver the stone to the mother of the Titans, Gaia who also happens to be the grandmother of Zeus here. So Hades decides to conspire against the other gods alongside his beloved Persephone, Persephone's mother Demeter, and Seraphim, who is also in the underworld, who Hades decides to give a second chance after he is properly judged. So it's up to our heroes to find this special stone before Seraphim does, while Heron and Seraphim find out that they might be more alike than they would have liked to say otherwise. So yeah, I genuinely think that Hades' sections of the season are generally the best. He's generally kind of sympathetic when it comes to his plight. His relationship with Persephone is actually kind of wholesome, by this show's standards at least. And Demeter proves to be a good side antagonist alongside Hades in this season. Also, I liked the development we got for Seraphim. He's still easily the most violent and the most crazed member of the cast, but he also happens to have more of a deep dive into his backstory, and he does have all of his kills ending up as justified in the season, especially since he's sick of being used as a pawn. Even if he just went from being a pawn being used by Hera to being a pawn used by Hades in the season. Speaking of Hera, she actually does seem to have mellowed out in comparison to the first season, as she does try to defend Zeus in the Underworld Court, and she also seems to accept that she's no longer welcome in Mount Olympus. She just wants to mourn Zeus and to keep going forward in any way she can. And honestly, given how most Greek myths and most adaptations of them treat Hera, I think this is actually an interesting turnaround for her character. On top of that, while the fight scenes aren't in every episode, the ones we do get are among some of the best of the series so far. Especially a big battle against Talos in the sea with an, a, with an Amazon ship and Alexia and Kofi finally getting something to do as part of the, of the side cast. I liked Alexia and Kofi okay in the first season, but it really felt like they didn't get much to do to justify them being there. Here, they definitely get to be more worthy allies to Heron. And Evios, well, he goes away partway through the season, so he, we're jury's still out on him. And also, the final battle in the finale is, while not as large in scale as the original Blood, Blood of Zeus, it still has plenty of interesting moments and still has tons of fun god powers being used. Plus, the thing that is uh, that they do is to, to tease the third season makes me think that maybe their five-season plan that they have for this series isn't such a bad thing, if the second season actually does well to justify making another season. And hopefully people don't have to wait three and a half freaking years for the new one. So, Blood of Zeus is definitely uh, a show that made fans wait a while for a second season, but I think for the most part it's generally worth it. Even if the pacing is still a bit off, and even if Heron's still not that interesting of a protagonist. That's why I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. See you next time.